What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about polymorphism in C Sharp. And polymorphism just means many forms. If you uh, see that word, I, it, I don't even know why they call this polymorphism. It's just such a contrived, just pretentious word, I think. Like, they had to, you know, these people who invented object-oriented programming, they just, you know, had to bring out this you know, really dorky word. And the, the word is poly, you know, polymorphism just means many forms. And when you're talking about polymorphism, you're talking about uh, types usually. So the types, if you just don't remember anything, just remember the types or the, you know, part of, let me just show you here. Like, so we always had the ping uh, class before and we, we instantiated our ping and we, you know, we newed up, we newed up a ping and then we would instantiate it and let's just say for instance uh this is what we're talking about when we're talking about the forms let's just say that this ping class is inheriting from a network class so there's a network base class and if you watch any of my other videos we actually went through and did this uh, we actually made a uh, network class and you have a network class that is one above so the ping is inheriting from the network so a ping is a network there are there's code in here that we have that uh is being sent down to the ping and this is all polymorphism like if you don't even want to watch like i'm going to explain in polymorphism in in more depth but if you don't even want to watch the rest of the video you know this is what polymorphism is I'm gonna blow your mind. That's all it is right there. It means that you can still instantiate a ping, you can still use all the classes and uh, properties that you would have in a ping, but you're inheriting for, or you're instantiating it with this broader base class. So there's another term too that you should really be familiar with, and that is code to an interface. Um, Robert Martin, the guy who invented clean code, he's kind of like one of these uh, fatherly type programming figures he invented the term or I think he did if he didn't you know make sure to drop a comment down below to correct me but he invented this term code to an interface and it's you could take it literally that you could code you know quote unquote code to an interface but what it really means is that you're coding to the broader base class you are in when you instantiate this object right here and you instantiate a ping which is uh the subclass or the derived class or the um you know child class whatever you want to call it of this network it will still instantiate and that's really the whole entire idea and that's the reason why you want to code to the base classes because the base class is going to cover everything it's like if you had one big if you had like if you had one giant umbrella and you went and you had another and you were like a person who had another umbrella and you stood underneath a, another umbrella like there would th that would make no sense it's kind of like the network is this larger umbrella and it will encompass the whole entire it will allow you to instantiate and give you like a broader you know thing so that if your code ever changed it would be more adaptable and that's the reason why you know polymorphism is such a big deal is because it makes your code more reusable it makes your code more adaptable and it's going to make your code more robust but let's just go ahead let's let's get an example let's get a like a better example in case you're not you know fully you know getting this let's just go through like a nice little example and we'll make a clap we'll make a class we'll name it animal and the animal is going to be like the broader base class. And we'll just make this public. Actually, no, we don't. We're, we're, in, we're in the program class right here. We don't, we don't even need to make it public. Let's see. Why is my solution explorer over here? I don't like my solution explorer. Over on the left side, I like it um, on the left. So uh, we'll just go ahead here. Call it public, who cares? Virtual um, void because we're not returning anything. And we'll give this one animal sound 
and we'll log it to the console. And the animal sound is, we will just say, right line, animal sound. <laughs> oh my gosh, these coding examples are so stupid. So uh, let's just say underneath here, we are going to code a turtle. My dog's name is Turtle, and he freaks out whenever I say his name. So we're going to inherit. Remember, colon is you're inheriting from animal. Then we're going to go up here, and then we are going to override our. If you don't know what override is, make sure to check out my other video on inheritance because I go into more in depth. Also, I go into an, uh, in depth on inheritance. Um, in my inherit or I go into more in depth about override in my like I said my inheritance video. I think I just repeated myself. Okay, so let's see. I don't know why did the base console dot right line turtle not turtle noise. Awesome. Then we are just gonna go up here and I'll show you exactly what so we can just go up here. We could just go up here, just make a turtle class. There's nothing nothing wrong with that. Although your code technically is not going to be as robust. So if it changed or something, or maybe you just want it, or if it had like another method, or uh, maybe you added another method into another class that inherits from it, you, you know, you would still be okay, but you would have to change this. But if you make it a base animal class, it becomes, like I said, it, it inherits from that base class and you don't um, have to worry about it as much because it's going to be more flexible. Also, another uh, form of inheritance is going to be, um, let me see here. I'm gonna pull up a good example so I can look at it while I'm coding. Okay, so let's just say here we've got We'll just go ahead and delete these classes. All right. Public class test. And this is going to be the more uncommon version of this is a tr this is actually a true story. So I went to an interview and I actually explained this. They asked me what polymorphism was and I actually explained this form of polymorphism and they told me that my this form of polymorphism that I described was wrong. And I actually was kind of like, I went back and they told me that that wasn't actually polymorphism. And then I was like, I th like I didn't challenge them, but I was like, I really think that like that is polymorphism. Like I've read places that this is polymorphism, but I didn't really push it because, you know, it's not really something to, you know, you're not you should if you want a job you're not going to get in an argument with interviewers but nonetheless like I didn't get the job and like if these people like maybe one day these people may run into my YouTube channel and they'll see me <laughs> they'll see they'll watch my video on polymorphism and they'll be like oh my god I remember that guy and if you're watching this right now and you're the interviewer you should be ashamed of yourself no I'm just kidding it's not a big deal all right so Go down here. This is actually a form of polymorphism too. And let me see here. We'll just go ahead up here. Top level statements. I learned this yesterday. If you're using top level statements in C sharp, you actually have to put the instantiation above it. So make don't put the instantiation down here. Always make sure it's up top. And we're just going to make this test data class is equal to new test data. Um, nothing really, you know, too crazy going on here. Oh, test, call this test data. So go ahead, we got that instantiated and let me just show you the second form of polymorphism. So we've got add to, we've got this, we've instantiated our data class and then we're going to go in here and we're going to pass in these numbers. And I'm not even gonna run this because I feel like people who are already at this point in the course probably know you know the deal I'm just gonna go ahead and explain it for you so we don't have to you know do all this redundant you know bullcrap so we're gonna go here 
as you can kind of see here, you can kind of get the gist. So these are exactly the same methods. Um, the only way that they are different, what, and this is very common, you will see this. You don't need to know that this is polymorphism, but you're going to see uh, this is a form of method overloading. Method, method overloading is actually a form of polymorphism. And what's going on here is that the previous form of polymorphism is dynamic. It means that after the after you click the little green button and you compile it, that form of polymorphism is actually taking place after you click the green button. This form is actually taking place before you click the green button. So method overloading is actually happening at compile time and the computer is going to decide at compile time which form of uh, which actual method that you are going to be using as opposed to the other one where it's deciding at runtime which one you're using. So just check out the differences between them. This one has three, this one has two. Um, you would think that maybe there would be an error or there would be some type of thing that would say, hey, you can't make two methods here, but in this, uh, in C Sharp, it's going to decide at compile time which method to use. And that is, you know, at the end of the day, polymorphism. It's not really, like I said, it's not complicated. It's not that crazy. You just kind of have to look at it and be like, oh, this method has three, this method has three parameters. This method has two parameters. What is, you know, which one is it going to use? And you, like I said, you don't technically need to know like polymorphism to know this, but it is good to know at an interview so that, you know, I could, cause I guarantee you they're gonna like, they always ask about polymorphism. I just think that the word is super cool and people just like wanna know more about it. I don't know. It's just a, I guess it's just a really cool fancy word and people just get really bent out of shape about what polymorphism is. But at the end of the day, that's polymorphism, not complicated at all. I hope that I got, got you covered. I hope that you figured out what polymorphism was so you, you can move on with your developer life and go get a job because <laughs> that's what it's all about. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.